Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be the final match between Kiko and Exit. That is game three of BSL Season 13 Hasu League Group A Losers Match. Upper left hand corner, Kiko as the red Terran. Bottom right hand corner, we have Exit starting as the uh, blue Terran. I feel like a... I don't know. I, I, clearly we're going to get patches for Brood War at this stage, but one of them I'd like to see is actually letterboxing, or, you know, the white shade around uh, these so they could be any color they want and it doesn't kind of fade out. And I feel like that blue gets to, maybe it doesn't show up this way on YouTube, but on Twitch it certainly does, at least on my monitor that actually has some nice color, some wonderful colors. Uh, Exit's name looks a little bit faded out. Anyway, this is going to be a fantastic match because you got these two guys. This is a recast, by the way. I, the initial replay I had was broken, so I know about the front, I don't know, portion of the match. Uh, and I've also had the winner spoiled for me, so we'll get into that. But this is a really fun matchup between these two. I feel like their play styles are ex not precise opposite, but it's they have clear clear strengths between them. Exit has an amazing game sense and is a very creative and very reactive player. Kiko, obviously an incredible macro player. And I feel like that's why... How do I put it this way? I feel like Kiko's strengths are when he gets aggressive early because oftentimes, even when he ends up a little bit behind... In the macro game with his early pressures it prevents him from so i guess kiko's weakness at times is being a little bit too passive or losing uh or losing track of what his opponent's up to and so i think when he gets aggressive and gets in people's face and kind of limits their decisions like he get like he did in a game two he can then just turn around with his macro and punish it, it looks like he's going to go for a cross map scan where exit on the opposite corner is just that yeah if you, you saw game one, you saw game two. He's a very, very intelligent player. A very reactive player. Oof. So it might end up losing scouting information because we got that barracks scouting up. A first Marine may be produced. The barracks just finishing Kiko getting critical scouting information. This is on Good Night, by the way, which I'm going to say probably favors Kiko because it is the more macro-oriented map. Fairly sizable. Exit now scouting that upper right-hand corner. Marine slightly delayed uh, for Kiko. Regardless, both of these players very, very... Look, actually, waiting on the factory is what he was doing there. Building that factory, that upper corner, before the Marine. Both players, I think, opting for... It looks like Exit built Marine first. So this is... It's not that big a deal, but it... Uh, in fact, I don't think it'll influence the match whatsoever uh, at this stage of things. But... Uh, Slight sl supply depot delay, and actually the exit had a really nice precision there where the supply depot just finished right as he queued the next marine up. This SCV, though, exiting out of exit's base. I need to stop saying exit. I need a departing. I should just start saying that. SCV sneaking that ramp as that second marine coming out, and he is going to be able to wander up, and critically, he's going to be able to see that single SCV on gas, which gives him a strong indicator that Kiko is, in fact, going for what is typical which is that base expand. Trying to shoot the gap right there, getting blocked by an SCV and perishing. The Marine has the kill. It's going to die information. First Vulture being built on this corner. And Exit just walking down, going ahead and grabbing the command center. However, Kiko plopping down his command center at the exact same moment. You can even see as I like tap in between, the HP is identical. Absolutely identical. Exit lifting off that barracks, floating it forward. This SCV... Pressing forward, it's going to be able to see. So just Kiko doing a great job of keeping eyes on what Exit's up to. He's going to be able to see that Vulture and that natural expansion up. He's going to go ahead and move his troops forward on the ramp just to catch any sort of scouting SCV that might have been sent out by Exit as far as a follow-up. Exit plopping down this machine shop over uh, the gas, which looks like it's will be okay with the SCV. Well, it looks like it's messing it up a little bit. I'm kind of curious how this is going to work out. And also, with this factory alongside, we'll see how this plays out over the time. Yeah, it looks like it's disrupting in a fourth SCV. <laughs> so Exit actually opting to throw in a fourth SCV to try to cope with this. He's getting That's going to hurt, actually, over the long run. Getting speed upgrade. Clever thought, though. Speed upgraded here. Factory as well. On the opposite corner. And also, with the way the Vultures are spawning, because the factory is to the south, the Vultures getting pinned in a little bit. So Exit might want to float that out and move it to a different location. Natural Expansion is up for both players. 
Kiko moving out. Looks like he's already got a second factory up and is already plopping down a third. Exit now lifting off that factory and grabbing a third factory of his own. So both players playing kind of the standard style these days, which is to go just a heavy amount of vultures. Especially on these larger maps, with the vulture speed, it just gives you an immense amount of map control. And if players try to go for Goliaths, siege tanks, th things like that, you can just kind of sneak underneath and just absolutely ravage the natural expansion and sometimes even the main. Exit moving out as that barracks is floating overhead. Slightly superior number of vultures for Kiko. Kiko also blocking up his natural expansion with that supply depot. And Exit taking significant damage, losing one vulture altogether and not even able to get counter hits. And small amounts of vultures being lost like this is critical in the early game. Kiko's barracks taking a bit of free damage to that marine, but that is okay. But Kiko with an early vulture lead and actually not pressing it. So backing off, worried about the close reinforcement location. But he might have been able to capitalize and regroup. Currently, he's got eight vultures out on his front door comparative to just the now seven for exit. An SCV on the front doing the repair job. And as I say, Kiko's the stronger macro player. Exit actually ahead in the overall SCV count. Plopping down a fourth factory. The barracks landing on this edge. This barracks wandering up, getting a scout at the four factory on the opposite side. So Exit getting all sorts of scouting information, taking damage there as well. I'm going to go ahead and peek at that natural expansion. Critically see no second gas. See nothing but vultures being fielded. Exit preemptively, and I kind of like this play, preemptively moving out with his vulture force, planting a lot of mines on the map so he can get an eye on where those vultures are going to be dashing to. The barracks burning in the meantime. This barracks looks like it might be able to exit out without ending up in the red for exit which might be an advantage down the way, down the lane. Fifth factory being plopped down. And the second gas being grabbed here by exit. Which again is going to suggest we're going to move away from vultures, potentially tack on some Goliaths, maybe even move uh, towards siege tech. Possibly a starport, but I doubt it. <coughs> Barracks holding position over that natural expansion. And right now Kiko just opting to go ahead and grab a fifth factory. And continuing to just pump nothing but vultures. <coughs> Excuse me. Cough, cough. Planting a few mines at forward locations. Two marines wandering up to the 12 o'clock location. It looks like they might be able to engage that barracks. This barracks, 70 health left, is going to decline. It's going to see that first siege tanks and critically going to see that second, but not that third machine shop being planted. So we are seeing a shift from exit to more siege tech style builds. This is putting this barracks into the red, so it's not long for life. It'll eventually burn down. Still no second gas for Kiko. Kiko just dedicating absolutely nothing but vultures. Six o'clock base. Looks like Exit is positioning to go ahead and grab that to take an early third. Moving siege tanks out to the ramp location at his natural expansion. He will be able to uh, siege tanks on location there. Grabbing his six o'clock base behind this upon seeing no vultures out in the field, wandering up with his own vulture to the north, is going to be able to at least kill a marine. Did the second one already evacuate? Curious where the second one went, or if it already died. These vultures, going to sweep in underneath, should be able to get two vulture kills. Looks like they're waiting for that target there. Yeah, engaging wholesale. So quick, small victory there. <clears throat> and as I say that, like, Kiko, yeah, macro-oriented player, he's gone nothing but vultures thus far. Is ahead in the overall supply count, but is behind in the overall worker count. So it looks like currently, probably because also Exit is opting to go ahead and take an earlier third base. So Kiko getting scanned right there, a bunch of vultures moving out. Exit checking that 9 o'clock location, not planting a mine. An SCV wandering across here, it's going to get wiped out. I got to give the vision advantage to Exit right here. You can just see he has an immense amount of vision. As a result of those mines where Kiko's mostly playing in the dark. <clears throat> but Kiko wants to get it done on nothing but vultures. And there's four siege tanks on the front. This is a great engagement location for Exit because he is going to be able to work with the invisibility there. Exit seeing the vultures start to move towards the 6 o'clock location, which is now up and running. There are no SCVs there yet. Trying to move to the high ground there. 
planting a single mine, but now the vulture's descending towards that six o'clock base. But keep in mind, they're fast. They can remaneuver. Exit's going to have a lot of territory to cover to try to defend this. Siege tank's eating through a handful of vultures that are peeling through the front. And now Kiko committing, engaging on the low ground. All sorts of vultures. SCVs transferring in the midst of this as well. A huge mine drag blowing up an immense amount of vultures to the left. That was almost disadvantageous for Kiko. I think that was a friendly mine. But at the very least, planting an immense amount of mines here is going to get a lot of SCV kills. And certainly going to disrupt. So, so much for the SCV lead. Although it looks like it is still being maintained. But is going to force a liftoff at the 6 o'clock location. Exit filtering out with some vultures of his own. Is going to reposition. Has more siege tanks at his natural expansion. And Kiko able to slow this base down. But he hasn't grabbed an additional expansion of his own. This isn't giving him an immense amount of map control yet. Planting a lot of mines. In between here, but exit departing. Haha, <laughs> didn't do it that time. To the north, he is getting an SCV at the nearby mineral only third to potentially take, and exit bravely grabbing his mineral only as well. And exit turning around, attacking reinforcements. Looks like he is going to be able to slide into this natural expansion. He's going to expend all these vultures, but it looks like he's going to get additional SCV kills. Still no second gas for Kiko, by the way. The SCV is getting absolutely demolished there. And initially, these vultures being brought back, but it looks like they're going to go ahead and re-engage. A single vulture blockading that 6 o'clock base. Eating some again out of position. Kiko having trouble maintaining this army. Some Goliaths are there to engage. And diving in with the rest of the vultures into that natural expansion. But it looks like Exit with a fantastic siege tank spread. And some vultures, some Goliaths to support and swat down mines. Only losing two siege tanks for that amount, for an immense amount of vultures. Kiko down to 31 SCVs. Is grabbing his third base now, but Exit has already grabbed his mineral only. And it should be momentarily trivial to go ahead and retake this base. Vultures are starting to scoot that direction. Exit... Looking to reinforce. He does have a lot of, de looks like, defensive units in position. Some mines being planted to the north for Kiko. Siege tanks slowly wandering forward, he, uh, doing a great job of scanning to clear those mines to the north. Kiko's basically sat on nothing but Vulture, Vulture, Vulture this entire time. Exit, maybe even thinking about taking a third base. I'm wondering if this is just in position to do some forward repair. More Vultures descending forward for Kiko. This is aggression I was talking about. Uh, from Kiko. I'm not sure, and it looks like Exit just wants to reposition this command center to that 3 o'clock base. Kiko with a vulture in there. It looks like it is going to get taken out. But still has a lot of vultures nearby to dive on something. He's got his mineral only up and running. Potentially this could get run by if Exit opts to go ahead and get his own, if he moves around with his own vultures. But currently he's kind of seeding and being a little bit more, uh, shelling himself up basically. To go ahead and cap not just a third at the mineral only, but also grab a fourth. Building an engineering bay alongside that 3 o'clock location, I assume, to plop down a turret. Maybe to defend against uh, potential drops from vultures. Also maybe high, uh, have a, a degree of coverage versus the mines. Mines and countermines in the middle of the map currently. More vultures filtering through. And Kiko still refuse. He still hasn't added machine shops. Sorry, he has two machine shops now. He's finally building tanks. In the midst of his attack force. But exit at nearly 60 SCVs. It should be 60 SCVs shortly. Has grabbed that 3 o'clock base. Now floating that engineering bay forward just to get scouting information, I assume. And play that scouting advantage. In the meantime, he does. he's still sitting at 6 factories. He's got that armory up. His level 1 weapons currently. That's well ahead of Kiko, who just, I believe, started level 1 weapons. Yeah, it looks like it's just started. He's getting in that academy up to get some comsat as well. Right now, Kiko is playing in the dark as far as uh, the mine coverage goes. Exit can clear a lot of these mines eventually, but the question is, is can he do that and defend the 3 o'clock simultaneously? 3 o'clock base up and running, grabbing that gas as well. Exit scanning, clearing a lot of the, that minefield to the north, planting a single mine of his own for future reference, and now walking into the middle of the map, eating 
a mine on a Goliath, but able to, it looks like, shove and take the high ground behind all of this. But the thing is, the Vultures can just flood right around this, and it looks like they are opting to do so above that right-hand corner. It is possible that they'll push into that 3 o'clock location. It looks like they're moving to do so now. Vultures on the opposite of the mine, uh, side of the map, pushing into the mineral only. Mines being wiped out by SEV, some nice micro right there, taking out some counter mines. But Siege Tanks and Goliaths are following, so it's going to be a base for a base. I feel like this hurts Exit because this is a gas mining base more than it hurts Kiko, though. So losing this base to several Vultures, but Kiko in the meantime being forced to lift off that mineral only. SCVs moving forward, they're going to eat a lot of damage. And right now the supply lead in Exit's favor, the SCV count lead in Exit's favor... Should be, let's see if he can go ahead and retake that 3 o'clock, lifting it off now. They might be able to take out that refinery to do additional damage, but I feel like the positional advantage for exit, denying that mineral only, is more critical at this stage of things. A command center being built out of position because of that mine. Exit pushing up to the 3 o'clock with siege tanks and Goliaths. And it looks like they're going to go ahead and clear out the rest of the vultures here. SCVs transferring. So despite Kiko stereotypically in these matches being, I would argue, a, a strong macro player, Exit actually out macroing him and able to cap additional bases. A turret now being dropped to clear mines at the 6 o'clock location. Kiko sitting at two bases. His main is starting to look thin. The 12 o'clock base is coming in position. There's a minefield in the way, but I don't know that Kiko can defend that, to be honest. Looks like some vultures able to run into the 6 o'clock base. Wipe out a handful of units right there. Exit responding with some vultures of his own. High ground advantage to Kiko, however. Being cleaned up. Level 2 weapons and level 1 armor should come online for Exit not too long. It looks like he's going to build that command center out of position as well. Following up with the siege tanks moving to the north. Going to go ahead and clear this minefield. Eats a few mines right there. But doing a pretty good job. I take that back. Losing a lot of those siege tanks. As he's walking through. 3 o'clock base is back up and running. And I think after game 1 and game 2, the players have been... I think they're a bit fatigued in this match. Just making a, a few mistakes here and there. I had a broken replay in the previous match. I'm hoping that's not the case again. And I think I wanted to chalk it up to the players being tired, and it just was broken replay. We'll see if Kiko actually lands this base. That'll be a big indicator. But this is about the moment I'm like, they're playing a little bit odd. So I'm not sure if it's tiredness or if it's broken replay here. I don't think it's a broken replay. I actually stopped it a little bit early. Anyway, Command Center is moving out to that upper right corner, so it looks like it is going to be a decent replay. Exit continuing to comp sat. He's trying to get repositioned in the middle of the map. Kiko with Siege Tanks down early. Level 2 weapons on these siege tanks for Exit. Level 1 armor is going to be finished momentarily, so those are going to hit harder. And unfortunately, Exit dropping siege right as the vultures are able to run and sneak through. But getting the better part of this exchange and able to clear out a lot of Kiko's forces to the north. That 12 o'clock base still somewhat exposed. There are two siege tanks in position. In the meantime, a lot of dropships have been created by Kiko. Trying to find some desperate plays to sneak back into this match. A turret, keep in mind, is at that 6 o'clock location. SCVs are just now transferring. Exit taking down his own turret, however. Planting more missile turrets down. And he's going to move that command center. Try to reposition it. Vulture sweeping through. Looks like they're going to be able to clear this out. That is going to be a potential distraction to exit. While these dropships sweep around. Kiko wants to clear this so he can transfer SCVs to that upper right-hand corner. Big drop here at the 6 o'clock location. Two siege tanks there to try to defend. Goliath, unfortunately, getting distracted by the dropships. The dropships taking a lot of damage right there. Counter drops moving in to clear out that last siege tank, the last two siege tanks and the Goliath, though. So exit with the same concept. I'm going to reload that, and I don't know that Kiku can defend everything he has. He's got... Only two siege tanks at the 12 o'clock base. His natural, honestly, his main, I'm not even sure that's worth defending. There's not a lot he would lose here. Trying to build more dropships to follow this up. He's got his 12 o'clock base up and running. Barely. He's going to go ahead and, I think, upon seeing those dropships, evacuate that upper right-hand corner, which is wise. 
and trying to catch these dropships and tr in transition, but he's only getting a single Goliath, and now they're out of position as the drop is headed towards the main. Science facility lifting off. Exit dropping what, and what I think he's hoping is a nice city, but it's some great mines from Kiko. Blowing up those dropships, or blowing up what was in that drop. That's going to get cleared out. The SCVs look like they're running a position to help defend, but not needed. Mines getting planted just in the nick of time. Another command center being grabbed at that mineral only. But exit at 155 supply, looking for his army in the midst of this, has an upgrade advantage. He's working towards level 3 weapons. Looking behind this, it looks like he's got a good 8 factory count with 3 machine shops rolling. He does have that starport. Army's continuing to build, getting a second starport, so it looks like maybe he's thinking about doing one of those classic Wraith tech switches. Still just 6 factories, sorry, 7 factories back here for Kiko. So he's a little bit behind as far as a full macro cycle. In one Vulture, one Goliath, or one Siege Tank, depending on what's being produced there. And Exit, once again, able to walk into that mineral only. And clear out everything that's here. More drops in that upper right-hand corner for Kiko. I think just to try to establish the high ground and maybe float that, yeah, and float that command center back. It's still going to be a problem transferring SCVs there as that Siege Tank and Vulture combo force is still in the way. Kiko also critically kind of dropping the ball as far as upgrades go. It looks like he's canceling that command center. Those Siege Tanks and Goliaths are moving up. I'm not sure if this was a mistake or he's just trying to sneak a little bit of distance mining in between all of this. But now Kiko in a desperate economic situation. His main is gone. His natural expansion is completely dry. He's only got one base mining compared to the three fully functional bases of Exit. And honestly, Exit can go ahead and probably take a fourth. Exit doing a great job macroing this game, getting close to 200 supply. Moving to that 9... Yeah, going to go ahead and move into that 9 o'clock base. And I kind of like his decision to play a little bit more aggressively in the expansions he's taking. So he's like, okay, if we're going to cut the map in half, I'm going to take the more aggressive forward bases while I know I have map control. So if I have to fall back to those bases later, I don't have to worry about it as much. Actually, also comsetting additional bases just to see what's up. What's up? Also, if Kiko is comsatting, he's going to see that this is gone, and I'm not sure if he would suspect a 9 o'clock base grab. And actually, I don't even know that Exit's going to grab that right now. I'm like, talking about him grabbing that expansion for a long-term macro game. Looks like he's just opting to just camp it. Big drops to reinforce this. Kiko trying to get a bunch of turrets up. Exit doesn't have a sufficient attack force to breach this, I believe. There's plenty of siege tanks on defense. So Kiko should be able to establish this base. The secondary question is, is, is he going to have to utilize dropships to get SCVs in here to get units to make this base functional? So exit, again, with a significant supply lead. A lot of that is in dropships, however. And it looks like he's going to go ahead and scoop up another drop. This is really going to tax Kiko because Kiko needs to defend that upper right, that 12 o'clock, and the infrastructure at his main. The upper right-hand base, probably the easiest to defend because of, he has all of those turrets. The SCVs look like they're transferring just under the nose of these siege tanks. That 12 o'clock base looks like it has plenty of turrets, although kind of a corner drop right there might be a bit of a risk. Also, Kiko might end up losing this mid-siege tank rain, although that would be forcing Exit to drop right on top of the mines. And Exit looks like he's going to skip everything in between. Was checking that natural expansion. He's going to just, just, wow, drop on top of everything before the turrets are up. An immense amount of dropships sieging up immediately. Might be able to just wipe this command center off the face of the map in rapid succession. Working on SCVs. That's lifting off. So Kiko going to be able to rescue that. But this is putting Kiko down to a single base versus Exit's three mining bases. And unless he has a counter drop of equal size... I do not know that he's going to be able to rescue this. Vultures being grouped up. Dropships doing vulture bombs at the forward siege tank position. So, and Kiko, yeah, Kiko now in a lot of trouble. He's moving up, it looks like, with a counter drop. But despite this, he's just lost a lot of mining time. Looks like he's going to go ahead and try to just drop stuff in the bottom left-hand corner to stop these bases from going up. Hoping that exit will, I don't know. Starve out eventually. Exit at 200 supply currently, though. 
And Exit can easily dedicate a few attack forces to go ahead and clear this. And honestly, he can just kind of make his way across and cycle back around. Defense Matrix for Kiko. That's cute. With the Siege Tank. Level 3 weapons versus level 1 weapons, by the way. With armor upgrades in between. So Exit's troops just hit a lot harder. So not only does he have a huge supply lead. Not only does he have map control. Not only does he have more SCVs mining at more bases. His troops are... Absolute beasts, comparatively. And Kiko is just bleeding units, it looks like, in between. Still being denied that upright expansion. Instead opting to go ahead and mine this natural expansion, trying to make the best of it. The dropship's going to go ahead and try to peel their way out. The tanks being left is kind of a sentry force. Exit has some SCVs piled in the bottom left to go ahead and grab this when he feels like it. Plenty of resources still pouring in in the meantime because he's still got that 3 o'clock base running absolutely no problem. Has dropships queued but cannot build them because he is maxed out on supply. All sorts of factories behind this. Grouping up his attack force towards the middle of the map and it looks like... Thinking about engaging Kiko, the question is, is where? So pinning him's just going to dive right down the middle. Three siege tanks getting wiped out very rapidly. Kiko's at risk of getting contained. And Exit doesn't even need to micro this, to be honest. He can just walk these siege tanks forward. I don't think he should even bother sieging, given the upgrade dis uh, disadvantage here. Dropship moving forward. It's going to get... Yeah, there's GG from Kiko. Realizing he was going to get contained and he was mining at a huge disadvantage. Just look at the minimap here. So Exit showing that on top of game sense, he can macro too. He moves on to the winner's match. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.